Hey guys, today I am going to talk about this scenario, and this is a scenario that is quite interesting. It's the Alfred Investments. Basically, he started it, and in my personal opinion, it will probably end with him. Alpha Investments made a Patreon program that sold boxes at $89 shipped. It was a $15 Patreon program, or you could pay up to $100. I've talked to a few of the $100 people who are paying $100, which then drops the box price by to $88 and allows them to buy a lot more. You, you can kind of imagine how much money or how many boxes they were buying, it is significant, anywhere between thirty to $50,000 in a year. Uh, often um, at the price of $88 a box. Now again, there's slight discounts on things that they would get. Uh, in fact, two of them sold me their collections. Uh, one of them is, no, and they, they showed me the collection because I paid probably four times more than Alpha Investment would pay, which, is in hindsight quite foolish. I do regret buying these collections. They were nice to have at the time, but um, overall they were not great collections today. Today they're, they were basically, in my opinion, worthless, even though I paid upwards of 30 to 40,000, 50,000 dollars for each of them. Uh, they have no value in my life today. I'd rather set them on fire than sell them or do anything with them. Outside, maybe opening the boxes for fun. The, this method, which would later be copied by Amazon, uh, really put pressure on stores. Uh, I'd, I'd love to say that, oh, hey, you know, things are always really good. Things are, you know, happy in these stores. But in reality, it's very, very much a price battle. And anyone who owns a store understands. Um, the customer is very well aware there's Amazon, there's Rudy. There's other patrons, right, selling at cost. So the way it works here is because the monthly membership, sometimes you buy, sometimes you don't. Um, at the end of the day, the $89 is very, very close to cost for Alpha Investments. And he's not really, overall, because of how Patreon works, not everyone's going to buy a box or a case every single month right so sometimes it's just free $15 or free $100 yeah um, you can't compete with that uh, as I can tell you even though my boxes are not booster boxes mine are in blisters I pay 91 and 93 dollars 91 dollars for a draft box and 93 dollars from a set box uh, and again, they do come in blisters, so they are much easier, in my opinion, to sell individually uh, than maybe selling a whole booster box, right? You have to kind of sell it kind of, uh, at one time. People don't, don't like loose packs, but they definitely will buy loose blisters. And yeah, this, this type of, you know, selling, this underselling and undercutting, when your local game store is trying to sell for 110, 120 uh, and you might be like, why? Okay, so why is the local game store, if they can get it for 89 or 90 why are they selling for so much? Why do they need so much margin? And it is, it comes down to employees, it comes down to rent, it comes down to electricity, internet, cable, it comes down to the point of sale system. It's, um, you know, it's a very, very low margin game. Um, you know, I, I wish these boxes sold for 140 You buy them for 90 It would be great. It would be great. I mean, it would be fantastic. I mean, it would be great uh, if that's what happened with Magic the Gathering, but it's not. So when you got people online and with free shipping and whatnot, and they're willing to go that low, and and Rudy actually, I mean, he, he didn't realize this, but there's always somebody lower. When you're in this battle... And the battle is who can go lowest. It will never be Alpha Investment. It's always going to be the company who can make the product direct to consumer. So if you ever bought any products on like Walmart and so on, and it's like these made for TV products, you can actually go on their website. Or if you have a product where it's like, oh, you know, you heard about it on Shark Tank or something like that, they always sell the product cheaper on their websites, unless there's like some type of contractual obligation. 
but when they're first starting, you can get a really great deal on their website for the same exact product shipped from the exact company because they're not paying to be in Walmart. They're not paying to be in these brick and mortar sh shops, right? So in my personal opinion, he kind of created this uh, this thing and it, it, it collapsed. I mean, I'm, let, let me just be quite frank uh, about what I'm saying here. I'm saying is that he created a race to the bottom and a game store would never win that race. But what he didn't realize was he was never going to win that race either. Wizard of the Coast was always going to be the winner. So Wizard of the Coast is looking at Alpha Investment, maybe somebody they don't like that much. But somebody who which Rudy has said multiple times, they've had conversations for employees, they know who he is, he's famous and Wizard of the Coast, right? He said that multiple times that these Wizard of the Coast employees supposedly contact him all the time. So obviously they're aware of his model. And um, it, it's quite simple. Okay, cool. Rudy's making all this money from doing this. Why don't we do it? Oh, is there somebody who can do that for us? Is there anyone? Oh, Amazon. Okay, cool. What if uh, Amazon says selling for 89 can dump it for 40 50 dollars a box? Uh, Midnight Hunt was like being dumped at 45 for a set, and I bought a bunch of them. I bought the limit, right? And I still, I mean, I think that's a fun set to open for 45 yikes, or 50 It was something I can look at my Amazon. They're still dumping that today. I was like, that was a while back when they dumped it at 45 and they're still dumping it today. Tell me, like, what business model can survive paying $89 a box for some, and, and, and having all the overhead and expenses when there's a, Amazon is literally dumping it on, they don't even need a holiday anymore. It used to be like, oh, Amazon Prime Day would come once a year. And then they had Cyber Monday deals and they had this deal and that deal and this deal and this, that. But now, like, they just call it, like, do you know the last Amazon sale was just called Big Sale? That was the name. I, I was like, wait. So, like, you're telling me this behemoth of a company couldn't spend, like, two seconds to figure out a better name for it? It was just like a weird sale. It just I have never seen something like that. It's just kind of the middle of the week, and it was, like, a Tuesday, Wednesday, and it, there was not, like, it wasn't a holiday. It wasn't, like, Halloween sale or there was no holidays. It was just, like, a sale. And you're just looking at that and you're saying, you know, what does this mean? Like, the, the, does that mean that they will always drop a sale like this? Does that mean that um, the next big sale will be called the bigger sale? Who knows? Um, but this model, this idea of not buying from your local game store and just buying from people online obviously hurts local game stores. I cannot believe people say Rudy helps local game stores. That's the adage, right? Oh, Rudy supports local games. He never, I mean, his business model is no different than Amazon. And I don't hear anyone saying Amazon supports local game stores, right? He also doesn't provide a place to play. You do realize that, right? He's cut no customers allowed, no employees. He doesn't imply, uh, he doesn't uh, give you employees a paycheck. He doesn't do any of it. I mean, and yet, you know, you're so angry at Amazon for destroying your local game store. Even even more ludicrous, more, even more delusional, the number of people saying that lo local game store is crushing it in the magic realm. Let me ask you, do you guys actually buy your shit from the local game store for 20, 40% more money? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Um, because... Here's what you need to know about owning a local game store. It's hell. It is hellacious. It is the profit margins are just so, so bad. I, I mean, I'm trying to think of a way to kind of, there's actually no analogy in business that makes sense here. Um, people open a store, not because they want to become wealthy or they got rich. And you just look at the people opening the store. They're not venture capitalists they're not people in suits and ties they're just like an older dude who has some retirement money and who's okay with losing money that is basically the ideal game store owner somebody who's made a lot of money in their life and isn't afraid to lose a little bit of money like this type of stuff guys i i just straight up tell you like a lot of people misunderstand that the biggest danger to local game stores is people selling online. That's it. 